Welcome to the Academic Woman Amplified Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Mazak, tenured full professor, mom of three, and firm believer that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb, and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. Are you tired? Like, so, 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 so tired. Like, moving towards totally exhausted, or maybe you're already there. Well, today on the podcast, I want to talk to you about why you're so dang tired. (laughs) And I especially want to focus on those of you who already have received tenure. Why are you still tired even after getting tenure? Tenure was supposed to solve everything. So today on the podcast, we're digging in to why you're exhausted and what you can do about it. So the short answer to why you're exhausted is that you're doing too many things. Yes, you're doing too many things. It feels like you're doing too many things because you are doing too many things. So that's the core of it. But let's dig into, you know, what that looks like and how you might change it. If you go to work and the first thing you do is open your email and begin to put out fires, especially other people's fires, emergencies that don't belong to you, (laughs) then that can make the whole rest of your day feel like you're playing catch up, right? But also it's not just that, right? You're actually overbooked. You actually have too many things on your schedule. And for somebody whose job it is to think, right? Whose job it is to make knowledge and change the world, through impactful knowledge making, it's really hard to do that if you don't have blocks of time on your schedule that are really for thinking, for processing, for marinating, maybe for reading, obviously for writing, right? And so if you're booked up and booked up and booked up, then you don't have that breath in your schedule. You don't have that you know, spaciousness that you really need in order to do the things that you want to do in the world. So yes, you're exhausted because what you're trying to do is that impactful thinking and writing and knowledge making work while your schedule is completely overbooked, while you're putting out other people's fires. So like, of course you're exhausted. It's totally understandable to be. So I want to talk a little bit, I want to specifically speak to my mid-career folks who are listening. And I want to say that exhaustion mid-career, I think, is especially profound. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that when you're pre-tenure, when you're pre that first big promotion, right, you're pushing really hard because the carrot of tenure is there to like motivate you that you're on a timeline, you've got to get so much done in this amount of time and you get that carrot, right? You get tenure. After you've gotten tenure though, you can have kind of a crash. And it's because you've been pushing so hard for so long, right? You push to get your degree, and then you push to get your job, and then you push to get tenure, you've been pushing so hard for so long that you kind of crash. It's kind of like almost like tenure is a letdown. And so many people talk about that experience that, of course, they're proud of getting tenure. Of course, they are grateful to have what is now at least a steadier, right? More dependable job than they had before. Absolutely. And they also feel exhausted. And they also feel like, why doesn't this feel different yet? And the reason it doesn't feel different yet is because you haven't changed anything yet. So your circumstances have changed, right? You're tenured, 
But until you change you, the feeling of the everyday life of your career is not going to change. So if you are exhausted pre-tenure, you're not just going to be exhausted post-tenure, but you might feel more exhausted because there's no carrot pushing you to whatever the next level is, right? There's this huge drop-off, especially in women who never get to full professor, right? It's like you push and push and push, you get tenure, and then it's like you're a deflated balloon on the floor because there's nothing else to keep you inflated, right? To keep you, to keep you pushing. And then the real work begins because you have to be the motivator of yourself and you're tired, very, 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 very tired. So let me paint a different picture. Let me paint a picture of post-tenure academia for you when you're not tired. So to fix the tiredness problem, you are going to need to do several things that right now feel impossible. But I'm here to tell you they are absolutely possible. We help people do them all day long. This podcast has helped people do them without ever signing up for one of my programs. So don't worry. These things are possible for you, even if your first reaction is, oh my God, that feels impossible. So the first thing you need to do is take control of your schedule. Take control of your time. If you are overbooked, you need to become less booked and you need to actively create spaciousness and time to think, time to read, time to write, time to do the core activities of academia, time to do that in your schedule. Now, if you got a 4-4 teaching load or a 5-5 teaching load, it's harder, absolutely, but by changing the way that you think about your schedule and really stepping into your power around it, you can do it. In our Elevate program, one of the things that we do is a time audit. And what we really want people to get in touch with, right, is what are they spending their time doing? And what are the most impactful things that they do? We use a, two ways to evaluate impactfulness. We actually think about, do you love doing that thing, right? Even if it doesn't have like a big payoff for your career, do you love it? Well, then you should spend time doing it, right? And then also impactfulness for your career. Sometimes we even think of it in terms of dollars and cents, right? Like where are the money-making activities? Where are the, the resource gathering activities? The things that are going to propel you to the next level and help you reach your goals, right? What are those things you should be doing those? And everything else <laughs> should go. And we talk in the program about ways to do that through delegation, through just cutting things, right? Through just standing in your power and saying, mm, my schedule, my time, this is what it's going to look like from now on. The good thing is when you're post-tenure, you have more leverage to do that, to say like, nope, not going to teach at that time. Nope, actually not teaching that class. <laughs> you know, and the reason that it's hard to do that is because obviously you've been conditioned not to stand up for your own time. You've been conditioned all the way through to not have boundaries around your time. And mid-career, post-tenure, you will not make it unless you can find a way to enforce those boundaries around your time. So that's the first thing that's gonna stop you from feeling exhausted. The second thing that's gonna stop you from feeling exhausted is that feeling like you are moving towards something. Now, the tenure carrot's gone, and a lot of people aren't really even thinking about the full professor move, really because it's, even less clear what it takes to get to full professor than it takes to get to tenured professor. So what I want you to think about instead is creating an internal motivation, an internal carrot for what you want to do in the world and working towards that. Because 
that might sound exhausting to you, but that's because your schedule's overbooked, because you're putting out other people's fires, because you don't have that boundaries piece. Of course, it sounds exhausting because it sounds like you're adding something difficult on top of a situation where you don't have a minute to spare. But first, we get you a minute to spare, right? First, you need to get that minute to spare, put those boundaries up. These two things like reinforce each other. The best way to like give you the ammunition to hold your boundaries is to have a goal. So in our Elevate program, and what I would suggest for you to do if you are mid-career is create a five-year plan. So first we talk about up-leveling your academic mission. What does academic mission look like post-tenure? It's different than what it looks like pre-tenure. And then looking at like, okay, where do I want to go? What's my big, scary goal? If I could make the impact that I want to make, what does that look like? Describe it, feel it, like really understand what it is. And then, you know, reverse engineer your way there. So you're creating your own kind of dangling carrot, right? Like to move towards. But instead of being a dangling carrot that is like, other people are going to make the decision and the, the path is unclear. You are making the path and, you know, there's no wrong way <laughs> to get to where you want to go. The only wrong way is to never imagine the possibilities, right? You need to imagine what is that impactful thing I want to do? What is that legacy building step? That is my next step. You know, what is it that's going to take this from being a career that I'm surviving into a legacy that I am creating? How is my knowledge changing the world? Big questions. And not just how is my knowledge changing the world, knowledge making changing the world. Also, who do I want to be? How do I want to live? How do I want this career to feel? Because if it feels the way it felt for you pre-tenure, why? Like, why are you doing it, right? Like, it needs to feel better than that. <laughs> it needs to feel energized and joyful. Not every minute of every day, but most of the minutes, right? Most of the days. Because if it's not that, like, what are you doing? It's not worth it. Your life is too precious and too short. So that exhaustion that you have may be because you you were pushing so hard for so long. You lost sight of what your big goal might be. Nobody's ever asked you what your big goal is. You don't see creating a big goal as possible for you, but I'm here to tell you it is. And that that is the thing that is going to get you to have a career that you love, right? A legacy building career instead of a career that you're like eking by or scraping by, or you're that cat with the fingernails holding on, right? <laughs> it's in that poster. Like, no, that's not what we want. You're too smart for that. And you're definitely too accomplished for that if you're tenured. And even if you're not tenured. So, so that's what I want you to think about if you are having this feeling that is the theme of this podcast episode, which is like, why am I still exhausted? Now, if you're feeling exhausted, the last thing you might think you have time to do <laughs> is to do any kind of coaching program or even to spend time working on yourself, right? But if you're a listener of this podcast, I think that you know what I'm going to say, which is that you know that there's more for you. You know that this could be done. You believe deeply that there is some better way, or you would have turned me off by now, <laughs> right? You would have turned off this podcast by now. So I want to talk to you about how we do it, you know, but I encourage you that no matter what, that you figure out for you how you are going to turn the tide so that you don't feel exhausted all the time. Our Elevate program takes clients through the six steps that they need to go through in order to create that legacy in their career. And of course, you're not gonna create a legacy in six months, but you are going to do the foundational work that is going to make your career be what you decide you want it to be. 
And it is a very powerful program. It is about having power and making the decisions from a place of internal power. You cannot be exhausted. (laughs) You cannot be making decisions from a place of power if you're exhausted. So we take you through a process of figuring out where your time's going. How do you build support around you? How do you get the resources that you need to do what you want? It takes you through a process of figuring out what that next level in your career looks like for you. What do you really want? And then helps you implement all the things that are going to get you there and create a plan for growth. If you're interested in our Elevate Mid-Career program, I would love for you to follow the link in the show notes, which will take you to our Elevate info session. It's a recorded workshop that you can go and see. We talk about all the details of the Elevate program. You'll learn what those six steps are, the six points in the curriculum, how we deliver them to you over six months. You'll hear the results that some of our Elevate grads have gotten. And you will, I hope, be inspired. Even if you decide not to apply for our Elevate program, you will have all the information you need and you will know that there are ways to get out of this exhaustion, that you will not automatically become unexhausted just by being granted tenure. You need to make a change in yourself if you expect your situation to change. Thank you so much for listening today and go follow the link in the show notes. If you're post-tenure or mid-career, register for our info session. Have a look. It's recorded. You can watch it on your own time, you know, at your own speed. And if you're interested, apply for Elevate. Our next cohort starts in February, 2022. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time loving on yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you're feeling pulled in a thousand directions and can't seem to carve out time to write, I've got a solution for you. Go grab my 10 ways to make time to write cheat sheet. Just go to kathymazak.com slash podcast dash time to learn my best quick tips for putting writing at the center of your career where it belongs. We'll link that up in the show notes. Just go to kathymazak.com slash podcast dash time.